Yes, we did not record our podcast. We've had a lot of time to record our podcast. We also didn't really look at the ranking list and reevaluate that like we said that we were going to. Yeah. So that's going to make the end of this podcast. A mess. A mess. Are you excited? Yeah, so good to be back. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like we need to put on like our podcast voice like in that show we were watching yesterday. <laughs> With the wine. With the wine. That's, we may, we forgot to make drinks. That's <laughs> the problem. What, what did we, what did we drink while we were watching this? Um, I don't know. It was too long ago. Yeah, we should not wait long times <laughs> between recording. I know, I forget everything that happened. Good. Just kidding, this is a great movie. This is a great movie. But first, let me introduce our podcast. Welcome to Bad Movie Date Night, the podcast where we attempt to take some bad movies seriously. We treat them as they should be treated. Inside every bad film is an overlooked piece of art waiting to be revealed to the world. I am Nigel from A Journey Into Film.com, and with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Caitlin. Hey. And this week, we are talking about the 1986 film Spookies, which has the best horror movie title of all time. This is Spookies, yeah. That is pretty good. It's not just spooky, it's Spookies. There's multiple... <laughs> There's multiple spooks. There's so many spooky things in this movie, yeah. they just pluralized it. Ooh. Do you want to share some initial thoughts before you we talk about the details and stuff? Um, this was such a good find. I feel like we haven't had the chance to watch a movie this wonderful since Shopping Mall or um, Terror Vision. Which, interestingly, I just found out that all three of those movies came out in the same year. And all three of them are probably our top three favorite bad movies right now. So was this the best year for horror movies? I think yes. I think 1986 was the best year for horror movies. I think you're right. Keep talking about what you thought about it. I'm going to look up horror movies in 1986. <laughs> um, it was just such a good find and it had some of the best acting with some of the best lines. To be honest though, I kind of wish we didn't watch the behind the scenes um, cause that took away some of the amazingness of this movie for me. Cause it made it too real. Too real. That did get real. Let's see. We had Maximum Overdrive, which we still need to talk about. Ooh. Little Shop of Horrors. That's an amazing movie. Um, Manhunter, I think. Is that the, yeah, that's the Brian Cox adaptation of, uh, Red Dragon from the... Uh, the Silence of the Lambs prequel. Oh, okay. Aliens, From Beyond, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Slaughter High, Troll, Night of the Creeps, April Fool's Day. Oh, that was a good one. I want to talk about April Fool's Day in here, but it's really not like a bad movie. Well, neither is Spookies. Yeah. Um, so you liked it. I did. I loved it. I thought it was so had had so many things that I would want in a 
bad movie. Right. Like Hook Handed Cat People. No, I, did, I didn't let him in it. He could have gotten away. Uh, but. Pedophile Hitchhikers. Yeah, that, that was a good. That was a good one. Um, random people in meeting, in groups. Yeah. I. That guy who wears a shirt with a picture of himself. That was my favorite. <laughs> this, this movie, we are fortunate that this movie got made. Yes. The way that it did. Yes. And there is a, there is another universe in which this movie was made the way that it was meant to be made. And I don't know if it would be as good. It would probably be better in terms of quality. It would actually be a good movie, but... (laughs) But then we wouldn't have Spookies. Yes. Do you remember the original name? Yeah. What was it? Twisted Souls. Twisted Souls. So let's talk about Spookies for a second. This movie has three directors on it, three writers, and so many actors. Uh, the directors credited on it is uh, Jeannie Joseph, Thomas Duran, and Brandon Faulkner. And it was written by Anne Bergand, Thomas Duran, and Frank M. Farrell. Now, I'm not going to list off all these actors' names. Because there were a lot. I actually, why did I even write them down? <laughs> but because no one, no one in this movie went on to do anything. The unfortunate thing is that neither of the directors made many movies. That's after cool. this, especially. And none of the actors really went on to do anything. Even except that guy? for uh, Peter Iasillo. That's the guy who wears his With the puppet? shirt? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he's, had to go on. He's pretty much the only one that ended up doing anything, but he plays a homeless man in almost one episode of every TV show that's ever been made. Was he the homeless guy in that movie we watched? Where they were making that movie? And in uh, Slaughter Studios? Yeah. No. Oh, that would have been... That would have been wild. That would have been crazy. So, Spookies started life as... A, as another movie called Twisted Souls, which was directed by Thomas Duran, Brandon Faulkner, and co-written by Frank M. Farrell. And it was basically an Evil Dead knockoff, where these group of kids find a house with a Ouija board inside, and then some spooky stuff starts happening. And so... They get into this agreement with this financial guy. um, From England. From England, who just sounds like an idiot. And, um, why can't I find... Oh, Michael Lee, that was his name. He uh, basically didn't know anything about making movies and put all these demands on them to add all this stuff to the movie. Like, at one point, he said, Hey, director... I have a gorilla suit. (laughs) And the director's like, why would we need a gorilla suit? We have all of these other amazing monsters that we've already made for the movie. And they had to, like, lock him off of the set to prevent him from just being annoying, (laughs) more or less. So then, while they are in the midst of editing... Some fights start breaking out, again, because Michael Lee did not understand how movies are made, and decided that, that they, he decided that the movie wasn't moving fast enough, and he didn't like the way that they had edited it. So, he would tell the, the directors and the editor to cut out frames in the middle of someone walking across the room, so that they would walk across the room faster. <laughs> And that actually happens at one point in the movie because they did it just to show him and he said that he had no issue with it. Wow. So eventually the directors and the editor quit. Meanwhile, Michael Lee meets this porn actress slash director who is working on a movie down the hall about editing and she says, I could do a better job. And he hires her to film new scenes, and re-edit the movie. 
And she added the Gold. best stuff. <laughs> it is very clear from watching this movie that there are two entirely different visions happening. Yes. This is to plug something in the pop culture zeitgeist right now. This is the Snyder Cut of horror movies. <laughs> Oh, it was, it was so sad. <laughs> it, it was actually legitimately sad. So then when the actors all went to go see the movie, they said, what is this? <laughs> like, what is this movie? Because it was nothing like what they had planned. Was the porn star in the movie? No. Oh. Why? I didn't know she was the one girl in the casket. No. Oh, okay. Maria... Pachucos? Mm-hmm. No. Pachucos. Oh, yeah, she, she went to go on to do stuff. I forgot. But only, like, a handful of things. Um, so, the other half of the story involves this creepy old man who may or may not be German, who uh, is essentially taunts a child for his birthday... This child runs away from home, meets a homeless man. The homeless man is killed by this cat man creature with a hook for a hand. The child stumbles upon this house where he thinks that his parents have thrown him a surprise party. I don't know what's worse, your parents forgetting your birthday or your parents throwing you a surprise party all by yourself in a very creepy old house. Right. Did the child know where this house was beforehand? Right. I don't think so. He stumbled upon an accident. This kid was not the brightest. No, this kid, he was carrying around an ice pick, too, which was yeah. odd. And the kid really has no connection to the rest of the movie, because he eventually just dies. Yeah. Uh, there's also a, a, a child running around in, like, a Jawa costume yes. with... Those, like, plastic teeth. vampire teeth that you yeah. get at the Halloween store when you're 12. And... And his face is painted green. Like, noticeably... But like bad. Like, like he painted it himself. Yeah. Like, kind of like how you would dress up if you were going to go do, like, a zombie walk or something. Yeah. And you have no money for real right. zombie <laughs> effects. The But that section of the movie focuses on this old man who may or may not be German, who sounds like he's talking into a tin can, and how he is trying to bring his dead wife of 70 years ago back from the dead. Yeah. Using, maybe, these... I'm going to use the term loosely. Teenagers who have come into the house. Who are his pawns. There's lots of chess metaphors <laughs> that I that sound like something that someone all of the chess metaphors are like someone who wrote down every chess metaphor that they've ever heard in a movie and then tried to cram them into this movie. I think Michael Lee like or whoever really likes chess. He strikes me as the kind of person who would really like chess and yeah, be really but bad, be bad at, at it. Exactly. But like in a very sort of Donald Trump sort of way, like, refuse to acknowledge that he doesn't know what he's talking about. I just like that the movie started off with this kid walking along in, like, a wooded area, and all of a sudden this, like, guy comes out of nowhere. What does he even ask the kid at first? He says, like, hey, kid, you got a light or something like that? Oh, yeah, he asked this kid, like, if he could light his cigarette. Yeah, so that was initially weird and then he proceeds to talk to this kid and said like it's your birthday they forgot your birthday right you, you're running away from home it's also and important it's like, to remember that this man knows this child's name yeah before like and we don't think that he's ever met this child before in his life because of the kid's reaction to seeing him he's like this guy's weird then they both get killed by Catman, and it's like what what okay and that's how we start our movie. And guess what? That We don't have any connection. It never comes back around to that. We, The homeless man is dead at one point. 
Yeah. And I think he might be one of the zombies from later in the movie. I think so, but I don't think it was, like, on purpose. I literally think they were like, you want to get in there, too? Yeah. I don't know why he died. Because... Because Catman killed him. I don't know why the Catman was in the movie. I don't know why the Catman killed the kid or the man. They have nothing to do with the old guy's chess game. Yes. So... Going back to how this is very clearly two different type, two different movies, in order to make it seem like it's all one cohesive story, they use the Catman as sort of a voyeur where he either watches things happen or if a character is trying to open a door <laughs> and the door is stuck you find out that the Catman is on the other side of the door holding it shut. That was my favorite. You don't ever actually see the teenagers, again, using that term loosely, or the Catman in the same shot together. No. But they are in the same scene. Arguably. (laughs) Arguably. And then, like, you never see the old man with the kids, with the teenagers, and you never see his bride with the teenagers. No. And, um, you never see them in the same parts of the house. Mm-mm. I really want to watch this movie again and fast forward all the parts with the cat man and the old guy and just see what the movie would be like. Not good. Because even those scenes were so poorly edited that, like, you'll see characters walking down one hallway It'll cut away and then cut back, and they're in a completely different hallway. And, like, characters will go missing for scenes, and at one point, the, like, one of the characters will be walking in front of people, and then in the next shot, they're behind them, and it's just... A mess. Yeah. Hey, that kid, uh, Billy was in, uh, The Princess Diaries. It's what was wild. One? The first one. Who was no, he? No, two. He was the dancing footman. He's also Charlie on Valentine's Day. It's kind of weird. But also, I'm concerned by all of these. Oh, what? Like weird male nudity. Anyways. Um, So that's. That is Spookies. I don't want to go. Part of our new format for this is not. Is trying not to ramble through the plot beat by beat but we want to let's talk about let's talk about what this movie does really well and what it does very poorly and see if we can glean anything redeeming from it which after thinking about it for the past couple days has been a challenge yeah i feel like this movie i think that the original idea of this movie was to literally just be a horror movie. Like, I don't even think the directors cared. I mean, I think they wanted it to be good, but I don't think they were going out to make, like, a new amazing film. Right. I mean, it's not like... Horror was still kind of a trashy genre in the 80s, so it's not like if they had finished Twisted Souls that it would be, like... The Witch or Hereditary or mm-hmm. Get Out or hailed as some horror masterpiece or something. Right. Arguably, I don't even know if we'd be talking about it if it was not finished in the way that it was. Yeah. I think another thing that it did well was pick some really great actors. Uh, at more least or what? less. <laughs> I think that guy who had the puppet, he was wonderful. I think he was seriously so good. Rich? Yeah. Yeah. The, he is the comedic relief of the movie. And he's arguably the only person who did a good job acting because yeah. he was playing his, himself. He had this weird puppet named Mook. That would th- hurl insults at people, and he 
he was just like the sarcastic one that was always like, oh man, at least let me get a few more beers in me before you splatter my brains all over the road. Because I'm too sober to appreciate it at the moment. (laughs) Like, he just kept going. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think he was a really funny, funny actor, and I think that he um, delivered his lines well. And with a good... (laughs) Whenever they find the Ouija board, he goes... Does he say, what does he say? Is that part like Parcheesi or so is that the other guy? It looks guy? like a Parcheesi game or something. Yeah. And then he's like, Well, how do you play? <laughs> how do you play? Don't you need like dice or something? <laughs> so it's um, very funny. It is. It is. So I think whether intentional or not, it is laughable. So they did that well. Yes. This is. I really don't, I really want to try to avoid putting movies into this category, but this is definitely one of those so bad it's good movies, Mm -hmm. because it is just funny. You just, you put it in, you laugh at it, and at the end you say, wait a minute, and then it's over. What did you like about it? What did I like about it? Well, I thought the best, the strongest parts were at least for all of the Twisted Souls footage, were the monsters. Mm. I thought they did a good job with that. I think if the movie had been edited better, we would have gotten more from them. Mm -hmm. But they were still good enough to appreciate. Because they had, like, puppets and full body costumes, and you could tell that a lot of care and effort went into making these Mm -hmm. monsters. Like, especially the spider lady. Yeah, that was crazy. That was unsettling. I thought that was impressive, and those how they built that underground floor to maneuver the puppets in the bedroom scene. Yeah, there's, like, these snake monsters that have arms, and they're all puppets, so they had to raise the floor of the room that they were in so that the puppeteers could crawl underneath and, like, move the puppets around and stuff, and that was... Very well, interesting really to learn cool. about. Yeah. I mean, that's that's typically what they have to do for puppets. That's how, like, they do the Muppet show and stuff. I mean, that's typically what they have to do with puppets, but let's talk about what the Michael Lee guy did with a puppet. They said, hey, puppeteer, get down here and do this puppet thing. And the puppeteer's in, like, 70 shots, and they didn't think, let's redo this or let's edit it. You literally see the puppeteer, like he's an actor in the movie. <laughs> I mean, not even like he's an actor, but he clearly looks at the camera and goes, oh, I know what I did wrong, (laughs) and like tries to duck out of the way for this like banshee looking thing. I'm trying to find, yeah, there it is. So they literally, they could have done that, but they gave us so much more. Yeah. And I appreciate that. That's, I think that's the only thing that they, only creature thing that they tried to add to the newer stuff. I don't know what to call it. The bride stuff? Yeah. The, the sorcerer? The German man The German stuff. man stuff. Which, yeah. again, I think about and it makes no sense to me. No. I do not understand how they thought, oh yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> he, like, he tries to, he goes on this whole thing about how these kids are showing up in his house. Which I guess we should probably talk about why... I use the term teenagers loosely in a second. And he says, like, oh, finally, like, I'll be able to bring my wife back from the dead. But it's like he's just been waiting in that house for people to show up for the past 70 years. Right. And then they don't even kill anyone, and she just kind of is there and then starts talking about how she hates him, and she purposefully killed herself to get away from him. Yeah. So, I mean, it got... Like, that could have been a separate movie. I mean, I feel like it's been done before in several movies. Say what you will about any interesting aspects of this, like, from a psychological... Well, actually, it's got some interesting psychological stuff. There's a, there's a lot of good relationship stuff in this movie, so oh, I'm pretty excited about that. there's a lot of dyna- dynamics. I have a question before we move on. Yeah. Who photo is on the main picture. This one? Yes. 
That's the guy, that's that's the sorcerer guy from the end when he pops up out of the grave. That's different than the guy in the basement. No, no, no. That is the guy in the basement. That doesn't look like the guy in the basement. Well, yeah, they painted it instead of. Okay. Do you like okay. how? Do you like how the woman on the cover is the bride surrounded by all of the monsters I that like, she never comes in contact with? Yes, and I I really like how they chose this as the main thing of the movie when really it's a subplot. Like, it's, what did the original cover look like? I That would be a great question. Actually, I think they have... At least Vinegar Syndrome made an alternative cover for the movie... Where it should actually be, like, what the film was about. Yeah. Here's the... Here's one version that doesn't look That's like That's not it. great, either. No. All right, so the reason I keep loosely referring to these group of people as teenagers, the main... Well, eventually, the, like, he becomes the main guy. He looks like he's twice their age. Like yeah, when like the movie starts, dad. you think that he's one of their dads. Yeah. And then you find out that, I guess he's dating this girl in the group. Mm -hmm. But also, this group is made of so many varying types of people. Like, on the one hand, they fit all of the character archetypes. Yes. They that do. you would see in a horror movie. Yeah. Like, you have the tough guy, Duke, who is borderline abusive <laughs> and you have actually they don't really have a well the the blonde girl becomes the demon thing mm -hmm. and it's the redhead who's the chesty one which is very apparent from the way they shoot this movie um they got the nerdy guy which i didn't really pick up that he was the nerdy guy until the second time we watched through this movie, and I was like, oh, he's supposed to be the nerd. Yeah, I didn't really get that either. One guy dies so early in the movie, I forgot he was in it. Yep. Um, you got the British girl, who's kind of a bee. Mm hmm And, um... Did I miss any? Oh, and then you got the, the straight-laced girl, who does make it to the end. Which, all of the main characters die. Yeah, everyone died. For, to what end? I don't know. Um, but they all know each other because, like, this is the only line that we get that shows that, that these people know each other. When the main girl says, it's crazy, I've known all these kids since high school. But she doesn't or say Or elementary what's... school. She said, I've known all these, I've I been friends with them since elementary school. Yeah. And you're like... What? She's like, it's crazy. I've been friends with these kids since elementary school. And you're like, cr what's crazy about that? Right. The <laughs> fact that you're also different? Yeah. It just felt like a very odd line to say at that time. <laughs> Again, because this movie was very poorly edited. And, like, the more you watch it, the more apparent it becomes that they did not know what they were doing when they finally cut this together especially with all the extra footage mm -hmm. with the bride and stuff my favorite with the bride is at the end when she goes when she's looking outside and she goes i know what i must do now run <laughs> and you're like what <laughs> what do you have to do now and then she literally just runs well she kills the guy she stabs well, him in the right. head she with the runs ice pick back, kills him and then which, yeah. thankfully, Billy was carrying that ice pick because yeah. who knows how he would have been killed. Right. Because he's a sorcerer. I think the most egregious thing in the movie is the muck men. Oh, the muck men. Good costumes. They look like a Scooby-Doo villain. They do look... Actually, a lot of the monsters in this look like Scooby-Doo monsters now they that do. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. But, like, better than the live-action Scooby-Doo yeah. movie. Like, significantly better. This movie would have worked really well as a Scooby-Doo movie. It, it actually really would have. So, movie idea. Yeah. In case anybody who has any real power can do anything, <laughs> remake Spookies into Scooby-Doo. 
Scooby Doo colon Spookies dash Twisted Souls. <laughs> okay, so let's give some more context to this. So at one point, Duke and Linda go into the basement. Duke is the tough guy. Of course, he's dating the chesty girl. And they, I don't even remember really why they end up separating the, all the people. They said they were going to go look around the house, but I don't know why. Yeah, because that's what you do in horror movies, I guess. And they're, they're trapped in the house because when they go outside, they die. Yeah. <laughs> the, that's kind of what happens. So they go into the basement and they find this wine cellar. And there, Duke's getting all handsy and whatnot. And next thing you know, this monster reaches up from the ground and grabs <laughs> Linda. And you think, oh, that's that's spooky. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks like a giant mud man. Yeah. With, like, some clothes and stuff. And then they start farting. <laughs> and it's not... <laughs> it is like... The most over-the-top thing I've ever seen. Like, Yeah. <laughs> you probably like one of those things where you, like, turned it and it would make a farting sound as yeah. a kid. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. And they, and they do it through the whole scene. What if they did it for every time a monster showed up? <laughs> <that? laughs> like, the, like when the fish-looking one comes up and he's got his, yeah. like... <laughs> this guy's like open round mouth thing shoots out his tentacle or the little snake monsters yeah they're just sliding around party <laughs> <laughs> or like specifically the grim reaper that would yeah. be hilarious I don't know what went through Michael Lee's mind when he decided that he wanted these monsters to fart but even though Jeannie Joseph told him that she did not want it, he went ahead and did it anyway. And the sound, the guy who made all the sound effects from the movie had the time of his the life. The time of his life. He was so excited. He was very excited. Apparently, it's very popular in Italy, that scene. That's I don't hilarious. know why. Um but honestly, it takes a scene that could have probably been scary because they're these <laughs> giant monsters and uh, they're just farting. What if, like, somebody... <laughs> what if somebody, like, broke into your house and they literally were, like, like, getting ready to, like, pull out a knife or something and then they just started farting uncontrollably? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you not start laughing? <laughs> How do you think of that? Because <laughs> I was thinking about those monsters. I'm like, if I was being chased by a monster and one just started farting, I'd just stop and laugh. I'd be so confused. But, like, would you? <laughs> I don't know. It'd be so weird. That w It would be weird. That That is true. <laughs> but, like, how do you respond to that? I don't, I don't know. know. That's what I really want to find out. Um... All right, looking through the notes here. Um, what else was bad about... I mean, there were a lot of bad things about this movie, but, like, what are some peak bad things? I mean, my top was definitely the puppeteer guy. Because, <laughs> um, like, that's just laziness. Yeah. The fact that they didn't reshoot that right. scene or, like, try to rework it in some way. Right. Um, like, so it's worse than bad. seeing the boom mic in a shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least that, you're like, haha. But then with this guy, you're like, what? what? <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's that. I I think, like, another fun fact that I learned that I thought was interesting and bad was, like, when they set it up where that guy is supposed to be having, like, he needs his allergy medicine. And oh, they take yeah. that scene out, and then he's just nasally for the whole movie, but you don't know why. Yeah. One of the characters, he does this, like, nasally voice the whole time. And apparently there's a scene where they throw out his allergy medicine. That was, so that was interesting. Or when the same character tries to run out of the house and 
when they filmed the scene, the intention yeah, was that, that there was were going to be ghosts and monsters flying around them. Mm-hmm. And so he's, like, twisting and jerking and looking like, He looks like he has Tourette's. Yeah. But they didn't add that in. Mm-mm. So it's so just him just... standing outside, like, Whoa. doing this weird Tourette's <laughs> thing before he runs back into the house. I also really like how they edited the film to have the cat guy in it. To hold doors closed. To hold doors closed. Like, that little mischievous cat man holding those doors closed. The weird thing about the... The other weird thing about the cat man is, like, sometimes he's hanging out with the German guy, and then, like, next thing you know, he's... Holding the door. He's holding the door shut, and you're like, how fast did you... (laughs) Like, I get it. Like, cats are, you know, agile, or whatever. He is not, though. Uh... But, like, how did he get to the other side of the house so fast? Right. I want to know what happened to him at the end of the movie. Like, how did he... Like, can he always change into a normal person? Great question. I don't know. I th- I Maybe the spell was broken and he turned normal for a second. Mm. But then when the old man came back, he turned back into... A, I mean, that doesn't really make sense either. Who, but Who knows? I also really liked when the bride is trying to escape, and she's in the basement, but then as she's trying to escape, she runs all the way from the basement up to the second story to climb out a window. Yeah. Rather than just going out the front door. So, the all of the scenes with the old man, you think, okay, this is in the basement, and then you told me the first time you thought it was in the attic. I was like, yeah. okay, yeah, I guess, like, the attic could make sense, because he does look down through the window at one point. But, but then, then she's in a cave. Right. And she's looking up out of the basement and then she's climbing down. And it's little things like that that show how poorly edited this movie is because there's no consistency. Well, and I think that girl that they found in the attic that like hung herself. Mm-hmm. At, well, I think it was in the attic where she hung herself. Yeah. But then wouldn't the guy and Chesty girl have seen them in the basement? Because where were they? Didn't they go down They were to in the, the wine cellar. That's different than a basement? I don't know. It, <laughs> again, it's like, it is It is two entirely different movies that are just kind of chopped together. Yeah, and what was up with that girl that they found that hung herself? We never even addressed that. There's no reason to. Was it the bride? I don't think so. How crazy would that be? I mean, why would she hang I don't, herself? Why, why would anything in this movie happen? I thought she but said that does. she poisoned herself anyway. I think I think she did. But also, wouldn't they need her body to be in the casket to no. bring her back? That's not how magic works. Okay. I don't think this old man knows how magic works either. <laughs> My favorite's like, do you want to see our child? And then that little like kid in the Jawa costume runs in. And she's like, oh my gosh, what have you done to him? And it's like, yeah, what did you do to yeah. him? Because you just look like an old man with a weird, veiny forehead. Yeah, that was weird too. And she looks like a normal person, but apparently they gave birth to a monster child. <laughs> I don't know. And does he not age? The kid? The child? That's true too, because she's been dead for 70 years. Mm-hmm. She also knows how to drive a car. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was weird. But it looked like they were married in the 1800s or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. And there's really no explanation for what's going on. No. So, uh, for either movies, there's no explanation. No, it's just kind of like things happen, mm-hmm. and they try to connect them in some way. Uh, I thought that overall the effects were well done. Mm-hmm. The rich character, he was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like I said, it definitely falls into the so bad it's good category, which is unfortunate because you want it. Like, you watch it, and, every, and I don't know, both times I watched it, I was like, ah, I can see how this was meant to be a better movie. And it's really sad. Yeah. Um, so, the la- one of the last questions that I have. Um, like, what aspects of this movie contributed to an aesthetic experience? And the reason I say that, if you if you haven't been on to a journey into film.com yet and read the, my defense of bad movies, I'd highly recommend it, because that will explain better 
the idea of an aesthetic experience, but it's it's more or less uh, getting enjoyment out of something that's really like subjective. It's why something that people would consider to be subjectively good or bad enjoy it and say that it's good. Uh, I think for me it was like the movie made enough sense, but it was also really confusing and made no sense. But it made enough that I could like follow it and be like, yeah. this is cohesive enough. But then it just asked, like, it led to me asking so many questions as, as to, like, what is going on or why is that character doing that thing? And I think that's what makes it enjoyable to me is whenever you just have a sense of, like, what, what is going on? Yeah. It is baffling how this movie got made in the way, that, well, it, it's not even baffling. How it got made makes sense. It's more of, like, how did this movie get released and people thought, like, yeah, this is good. Yeah. This is this is what we want. Right. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's it's funny. It is. It's Whether it was meant to strange. be funny or not, it is. Yeah. I mean, if you market it as a comedy, then yeah, yeah it's going to work. <laughs> um, surprisingly, though, so the... I want to talk about if there are any ideas or themes in the movie. And surprisingly, most of them are in the scenes with the bride, I thought. Because, obviously, this old guy has issues with power and control Mm -hmm. and also loss. And that kind of ties into the, like, what can we learn about relationships from this? Part of our revamping, we want to talk about dating more. Mm -hmm. And can we learn about dating from these bad movies? We might answer this question sometimes. (laughs) Uh, From this movie, don't get into any relationships like the people in the film. Yeah, well, okay. If you find a guy that has a leather jacket in which the zipper is not in the center of the jacket, (laughs) he might not be a good guy. Also, if his... uh butt is always showing because his pants are too tight yeah if he chooses to wear leather from head to toe might be questionable yes if he has a veiny forehead he's an unknown age but he looks like he walked out of the grave do not and he's also a sorcerer do not date him that's a deal breaker (laughs) (laughs) can't say that i'll get sued yeah, we'll probably get sued by NBC. Uh, and I also think, you know, maybe death should be the end of a relationship. Yeah. Maybe that's a good sign to move on. To move on, yeah. If you want. Well, I mean, like, okay, you know, if you meet someone else, like, great. But if you're like, nope, that was the love of my life. Oh. Like, I mean, maybe just don't try to bring them back from the dead. With How magic. With magic. And monsters, and also don't taunt 13-year-old children <laughs> in the process. Right. Just be a good person. Be a good person. Also, like, uh, if you're an older guy, maybe don't hang out with high schoolers. Yeah, they were college kids. I mean, they were old enough to drink. It's not like they were Where like... It's not, it's not like they were like, oh, mister, like, go get us beer. <laughs> like, that would have been interesting dynamic to things um also if your girlfriend is obsessed with smoking and belittles you <laughs> maybe you should reconsider yeah that all was of an your abusive life choice that was who was more abusive duke and linda or dave and what's her face i think dave and what's her face it's understandable because i don't feel like i mean i feel like duke wasn't a great boyfriend but i feel like he did genuinely like care for her yeah her um, crap, what was her name? Um, Megan? No, Adrian. Yeah, Adrian. Dave and Adrian. Adrian was not a nice person. Duke and Adrian. No, or Duke and the, Linda. Duke and Linda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian was the British girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was not healthy. No, se. she was so rude. She, at one point, yells at him because he's like, well, we're gonna die, so I'm gonna drink schnapps. Yeah. And she's like, don't do that. You're gonna make yourself sick. <laughs> And then he makes himself sick. So, I mean, like, she she knew what was up, but... 
So he could have been nicer. Yeah, I mean, guys is gonna die. Just let him go. Maybe the answer is uh, we all just need puppets. Rich seemed surprisingly <laughs> mentally healthy, and he carried around Mook the puppet. Right. And had a picture of himself on his <laughs> shirt, so what can we take away from that? I don't know. <laughs> he loved himself. He was in a really good He was comfortable with himself, himself. yeah. <laughs> well, that's actually all I really had. I know that we can't rank this movie this week, because we are reworking the definitive yeah, bad the movie date night ranking. So those. we don't know. Yeah, we don't really know. Well, I was gonna... We'll have to talk about that. I don't... Okay. They have a couple it's different ideas of where we can go. And because we're gonna shoot... Shoot. Because we're gonna record a couple episodes back-to-back, um, our next one's probably not gonna be on the list either. But I hope that everybody liked the new direction that we're taking things, trying to treat these more seriously as works of art. Because, you know what? Somebody, a lot of people worked hard on these. Yeah, and they seemed like they had a really good time making this movie. Even if it all went to crap in the end. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, from watching the the behind-the-scenes, it really did show that, like, this was somebody's, like, passion project, so to speak, that they had enough faith in this movie and they were passionate enough about scary monsters that they wanted to make something like this and you know I say like good for them yeah no I think that I think that sums up everything way better than I could have that's what I'm here for um it is sad to see or to hear that Thomas Durand never got to fulfill his potential Mm -hmm. as a director and lived a life of meaningless purpose and uh that's sad because you could tell that he really wanted this to be something special. Mm-hmm. Um, Caitlin, do you have anything that you want to add to it? No, but I really enjoy this movie, and I will be putting it in my top favorite movies. Yes, uh, this movie is available with an excellent version from Vinegar Syndrome. Highly recommend you go buy it from them. Worth um, it. Yeah, worth it. Support small blu-ray labels because yeah. they release the best movies yeah they do you know what also is a really good effect hmm. when adrian gets attacked by the fish monster mm-hmm. and her face melts yeah that, that was, was really good. well done how about when the spider <laughs> oh yeah that was cool when the spider sucks the life out <laughs> of rich that was it did not look good but no. the scene itself was very well done yeah and uh good job to them so go watch this movie And uh, we will see you guys next time for Return to Horror High. And hopefully we'll have some more interesting things to say about that one and Marsha Brady. And George Clooney. And George Clooney. So get excited and we will talk to you guys next time. See you next time.